Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, this week I am going to be doing a, something of a user request video. Um, you guys have actually been telling me a lot of things that you wanted to see painted in the comments. And I really appreciate that. It's great. Please keep it up. I want to see more because I need ideas. Um, so I thought I would actually go ahead and try and fulfill some of those user requests. And I'm going to start out with this video. Um, anyway, one request that I had, I don't know, it was at least several videos back. It's been a little bit, but one request I had was for how you can paint sort of a medieval archer type guy, you know, sort of War of the Roses period. Well, as it so happens, I've got some nice War of the Roses figures, as you may remember from earlier on when I did um, my tutorial on how to paint an armored uh, standard bearer. Uh, this guy is basically from exactly the same box set as our um, noble standard bearer, but he's more of just your typical foot archer, nothing special. Um, once again, this is a parry set. This is uh, their War of the Roses plastics box. It's a really cheap, good way to get yourself a lot of archers and a lot of sort of footmen, spearmen that you can use in your medieval army and they're great for painting because they're very nicely detailed and you can customize them however you like and put them together quite easily. Now um, I'm also going to combine this user request for how to paint an archer with another bit of a user request I had I think more recently. Somebody asked me how you can uh, paint sort of a raw sort of unbleached wool or fabric, sort of natural colored fabric. So, you know, what's a good way to do that? Uh, I've talked a lot about white, but, you know, people want to see, I guess, how you can, you know, handle just sort of natural materials because, let's face it, they're pretty, you know, they're pretty going to be pretty common, especially if you're painting a lot of kind of lower rank type people. They're going to be wearing a lot more of those natural fabrics. So, I am not only going to be painting this archer, but I am going to be using this as um, a vehicle to show you how you, well, maybe even a couple ways actually that you can paint sort of fabric in a way that looks like it's sort of natural and undyed or, you know, untreated. So this video is basically going to be a two for one, I guess, in terms of user requests. Um, and You'll have to tell me what you think if you find this useful. Uh, I definitely will be doing more of these in the future. I just like to space them out a little bit because I like to make sure I don't group too many uh, videos together that are from roughly the same time period. I like to keep people with all interest happy, which is why I skip around. So this guy's been, as usual, I put him together using plastic glue, you know, the usual. I'm not going to go into how to put together plastic figures here, and then I base coat him with my usual gray enamel, and gone ahead and painted his hands and face in the way that I usually do. Um, yeah, I guess there's not really anything else to say about my technique, it, though as usual as I was in my last video, thin your paints down, uh, take your time, um, and you will get much better results. So I guess that's all I need to say about that for now. So why don't we go ahead and get started with our um, War of the Roses era archer. All right, so we're gonna start out by painting our archer's hose. And this is an area where I'm going to show you one way that you can paint a natural looking kind of fabric. Um, and I'm going to go in this case for sort of a more sort of grayish white natural color here. I am using a new uh, foundry triad for this, which is called Austrian Gray. I've never used it before, so new experience. Um, uh, right here now I'm base coating it with the shade color from that triad, and I have mixed just a hint of wine stain red light into that, just to make it slightly pinker, because we don't want um, our natural fabric just to feel too strongly and oppressively gray. Now I'm going to apply a wash of Agrax Earthshade that I thin quite substantially all over the tights just to get some darker color in the creases but not really be too overwhelming. Alright so now it's time to start highlighting and sort of brightening up these tights. Um, start, I'm going to start out first with the medium color from the Austrian Gray Triad. And once again, I've mixed just the barest hint of that um, Weinstein red light in there just to get it slightly reddish. And after 
I've layered this on and I am keeping the paint very thin here so I can build it up very subtly and get lots of uh, light variations in color because as I think I've mentioned in earlier videos when you're painting a color like this that even if it's not really white but it's a color that's very close to white or a very light color subtlety is the key if you try to go too high contrast here you're going to get an unnatural ugly effect so you have to just, you know, it's going to be subtle, but you have to just take your time, go slow, put on thin layers, and don't expect, you know, massive amounts of contrast because it then it's just not going to look like how you want. With that uh, medium color applied, then I'll just take the light shade of the Austrian gray, mix a bit of pink into that as well, and layer that on in areas where I want more light, like the fronts of his knees, all of the sort of the tops of all the creases where he has creases in his hose, uh, the fronts of his thighs, um, the tops of his calves, basically all those areas and I'm going to really build up that lightest color on those areas. Um, and then finally I will take just some pure white and mix just a hint of, of, of that wine stain into there as well and basically to do the thing, same thing but do it to a lesser extent because that color is you know very light and I don't really want these tights to just look white I want them to look sort of like they're gray they're sort of a, a sort of an undyed wool color that's kind of what we're going for here so I don't want to put that on in too many places but you pay a particular attention with that color to the back of the tights there's a seam running down the back of these kind of tights and you want to probably edge that make a little fine line and along that seam that'll and I'll make it pop out and it'll add a nice detail there to the tights so this is basically one way you can handle um sort of raw kind of undyed fabric because you know sheep's wool comes in a whole bunch of colors depending on what the sheep's look like but this sort of whitish grayish color is going to be sort of a very common shade that you're going to get if you don't do very much to the fabric um, or the wool that is when you're spinning it and weaving it um, and i liked adding this sort of slight pinkish cast to the fabric because i think most natural fibers when they catch the light they usually have some sort of color in them you know, uh, something, you know, black fur often has sort of a brownish red cast in certain lights. And, you know, the same way with this sort of sort of gray white fur or wool in this case, you know, when the light catches it, you know, there's going to be a slight color cast in it. And so if you work that into um, your figure when you're painting into the fabric, that'll it'll make it a lot more interesting to look at and it won't just feel like you're just painting it a straight gray color. All right, so once the hose are done, I'm going to move on to doing another area that I want to paint using sort of a different type of natural looking fabric. Um, and I'm going to be applying this to his under tunic, which is sort of peeks out beneath his sort of main jacket. And also you see the long sleeves coming out there. Uh, for this particular piece of clothing I'm going to be using the raw linen triad from Foundry which is already as it is a really nice uh, color sort of grouping if you want to paint a natural looking uh, piece of fabric I mean obviously it, it's meant to look like unbleached linen or it could be you know also some sort of just more natural looking wool um, cotton it, you know it, it would work for a lot of things it just gives you that general effect so all I'm really doing here is applying the shade color and then I'm just going to go ahead and layer on the sort of medium and light colors. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, when I'm done I will add one final high highlight to sort of creases and edges and stuff using Boneyard Light from Foundry. Um, I'm doing that because this is a extremely sort of a very yellowish color and um, you know sometimes I, I often find that if you want a really high contrast looking figure then the highest highlight shade in these trides is never quite enough so I'm going to put that on. You could also choose to do this using Boneyard I suppose that makes a reasonably good natural colored fabric but I like raw linen a little bit better just because it has the sort of greenish yellow cast to it which is a little bit more complex and a little bit more interesting and I actually feel like it gives more of this raw fabric sort of undyed fabric impression than just using straight up bone yarn wood. 
All right, now I'm gonna start painting the archer's surcoat. I've decided already that I'm gonna give him the livery of a Lancastrian, and I'm specifically painting him to look like he's in the household of the Duke of Buckingham. Uh, I got the information for how to paint this from right from the back of the parry box. They have a number of examples of different ways that you can paint these guys so that they can be part of different armies and in the service of different lords. I just chose this particular one because I like the color scheme. Um, so this particular jacket ha is going to be black and red and it's split down the middle. So I'm going to start out by painting the black half and I'm going to be using the charcoal black triad from Foundry to do this. Um, so I'm going to start out with a black base coat um, and I'm going to mix just a hint of foundry deep blue medium into that because I don't like just solid black, just like with the tights, getting a little tiny bit of some other color in there keeps it more interesting and doesn't make it appear so, you know, it won't be so neutral. It'll just be a little bit more appealing when you look at it. So I'm applying that base coat. I'll then make a medium shade by mixing some of that black with the charcoal um, gray medium color and a, once again a hint of blue and I'm doing that because the actual medium shade as I've said to other videos is just a little bit too light when you're trying to paint something that looks black. So I'll then layer that on to the um, um, onto the surcoat and then I'll go ahead and I will then take just the charcoal black medium with some blue in it just without any black mix and I'll use that sort of as a light color and I'll be doing the edge highlighting, so sort of fine lining of this tunic using the charcoal gray light, also with some blue in it. And if I don't feel like that's light enough, I may even add a little bit of white to lighten up just a little bit further because there's not a great deal of difference between the charcoal gray medium and the charcoal gray light in this triad. Um, once you're done with that, take a look, see how you feel, if you think it's, you know, feels too gray, if it feels too blue, whatever. In this case, I gave my um, figure a wash of Nuln oil after I had applied that just to unify the colors a little bit and, you know, bring it back closer to black. And then I highlighted in a few places. It's necessary where I felt like, you know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't quite, you know, bright enough or the contrast had been taken away too much. All right, now for the red half of the surcoat. So I'm gonna be starting out by base coating everything using the Citadel Mephiston Red base color. Uh, this is, just apply it carefully, you know, don't miss any spots, try not to make a mess. Uh, one then dry, go ahead and put a wash on it. I used Ball Red, but that's the older Citadel wash. I think the new one is Cardboard Crimson. It doesn't really matter a lot, but just put another wash on the red to darken it down a bit and, you know, give it plenty of time to dry. Uh, once that's done, I'm going to start layering on thinly um, some um, Evil Sun Scarlet, and that's going to really start brightening up the look of this tunic. Um, and apply it thinly and build the color up in the areas where you want brightness. Then I'm going to finally kind of finish this off by taking some of that Evil Sun Scarlet and I'm going to mix in some Boneyard Light to that and I'm going to use that to get, and that creates kind of, yeah, I guess sort of a pinkish color and I'm going to use that as a high highlight uh, kind of along the edges of things and sort of on the tops of his sleeve, on his shoulder, and a little bit on the front of his chest just to get even more brightness there. And, and you know, if, if that doesn't feel strong enough and I didn't actually find it quite strong enough, I actually then added even more of the Boneyard Light in there to kind of create a final very light pink edge highlight, which I then kind of ran, ran around the edges of the sleeves. And definitely where there's the divide in the middle of the surcoat, be sure you put an edge highlight down there and do that on the red side as well as on the um, black side because that'll it'll just make everything look a lot better. It'll you know it'll everything will just stand out better. It's just visually way more appealing if you do it that way. Uh, now I'm going to take the opportunity before I go any farther to paint the livery onto surcoat and it's sort of a symbol and it goes on the black half. Um, it's this this sort of livery the Duke of Buckingham seems to be sort of like a sort of a sun sort of with like a little star in the center. Uh, I would say look online at some heraldry and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. It's kind of hard to see in the video here because of where it's positioned. I just painted this on by taking some foundry ochre shade and sort of roughing out the base shape. Um, once that was done, I highlighted it with some ochre light 
And then I took and made a black circle in the center because it's sort of an open uh, sun and then drew with some more of the ochre shade and ochre light as highlight, sort of, sort of a six spoked sort of figure in the middle of that. Um, then finally I took some Boneyard Light again and I sort of used that to carefully highlight sort of the top half of the yellow part of this uh, figure. Um, I'm sorry you can't really see better what I'm doing here, but it's just unfortunately at a very awkward point on the figure. So um, I suggest you have a look online at how this thing is supposed to look. And you could put a lot of other symbols here, depending on, of course, on who your, you know, who your troops are serving. Now I need to start tackling some of the, you know, tons of little detail leather areas that this figure has got. And I'm going to start out by painting his belt, um, the straps on his helmet, also some of the little wrappings around his sword scabbard. And I'm going to be using the Conquer Brown Triad from Foundry to do this. Nothing fancy. I'm just going to apply layers and, you know, put the light colors on areas that I want lighter and leave the dark colors where I want, you know, shadows and the recesses and it's that these are very tiny areas so it shouldn't be a big deal and you should be able to do this very quickly and next i'm going to paint the scabbard of his dagger which you just see poking out there and then also the scabbard of his sword i'm going to do this using my favorite leather technique which i discussed extensively in my last video but basically i'm applying vallejo german camouflage black brown and then i'm sort of layering over lightly some bay brown light some chestnut shade and some chestnut light and sort of blending it outwards from one edge and now i'm going to start working on several things at once just for you know reasons of efficiency i'm going to start out by putting a um, rawhide shade um, a coat onto his shoes and to the pouch on his belt um, and once I've got that on, I'm going to take an Agrax Earthshade wash and put that over both of those areas just to darken them down further. Uh, while that's all drying, I'm going to go ahead and also put a base coat onto his bow and onto the shafts of his arrows. And I'm going to be using Spear Shaft Shade for that base coat color. Uh, and then once I've got that on, basically then the, the, the shade color on his um, shoes and pouch will have dried so I can go ahead and um, start uh, highlighting that. And I'm gonna first start out by applying the um, rawhide medium color and sort of carefully uh, layering that on as best as I can. All right, so now I'm gonna continue highlighting the, um, the bow and the arrow shafts using spear shaft medium and spear shaft light. Um, that's a little bit tricky on the bow just because you can see it from all sides. It's round. It's hard to decide, you know, where to focus that really light color because you don't want it to be equally light all over. But at the same time, if you do it wrong, it, you, there's like going to be a break in the color and that doesn't look very good. So you have to apply layers, thin layers and kind of build up color. And in this case, I always try to sort of concentrate the lightest color sort of on the outward face of the bow. So where it's sort of inward facing towards him. I leave that a little bit di darker and sort of sort of um, blend, you know, I don't, not out, but I guess blend in from that point. So the outer face should really be the highest concentration of the lighter shade and kind of sort of fade out from there going around the whole bow to the back. And uh, now I'm just going to go ahead and really quickly highlight his boots and his belt pouch using rawhide light um, and, you know, concentrate the um, color on sort of the tops of his toes and sort of the sort of the folds around the top of his shoes and also sort of around the top of his um, sole where the two pieces sort of join together. Okie dokie, now I am going to be base coating the feathers on his arrows using Boneyard Shade. Um, and then while that is drying, I will also be base coating the metal areas on this figure. And th that I will be doing by mixing um, German Grey from Vallejo with natural steel 
also from Vallejo, and a lot more of the German gray, obviously, than the natural steel, because you want a very, very dark color for these metal base coats, as I've said before. Uh, that's going to be applied to his helmet, sort of the fittings on his scabbard, the, um, the um, sort of the guard and the pommel of his sword, all, various little buckles and bits sort of on his uh, straps and belt, and also, of course, on the arrowheads, because those are all areas that we want to appear metal. You could also mix this up a little bit and use sort of a brass or gold color on some of these areas, but just purely for simplicity's sake and to keep this, you know, sort of streamlined, I'm going to stick just to these sort of steel silver colors of metal. Uh, once I've gone ahead and done that, then I will go back in with Boneyard Medium, and I'll be using that to add a medium highlight to the, his bow feathers, and also add a high, high highlight to his boots, because I wasn't really satisfied with them. I didn't feel like there was enough contrast there. They, they just need a little extra pop of color, something to really make them stand out and really sort of focus on the edges and, and sort of creases that you've got on those shoes and I just didn't feel like that was happening enough so that's why I kind of added in that extra color. Uh, now I'm gonna, just going to focus on finishing this figure up. Um, I'm going to be sure to really quickly highlight uh, those feathers one last time using the Boneyard light color and then I'm going to focus on the metal. Um, I'm going to first make sure everything has a wash of um, Nulled oil just to get extra darkness down in all of the cracks and uh, creases. And once that's dried, I'm going to start layering on Vallejo Natural Steel, which I've watered down a fair amount, not too much, but enough so it flows very easily. And I'm just going to be building up layers of that, building up shininess in areas where I want it on the helmet. You know, take several coats because it won't coat all that evenly. Um, I'm then going to go ahead and even add a higher highlight of just Vallejo Silver, which I've similarly thinned quite a bit. Um, I'm not going to put that very much onto the fittings like the sword and the buckles and the arrowheads, but I am going to really focus it on the helmet because I want that to be really shiny. I'm going to really work on sort of layering it onto the top of the helmet and along all the edges and stuff to really get that to be really nice, really pop out. Then finally what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back in with some pretty thin down, pretty actually quite thin down um, German Grey from Vallejo and I'm going to sort of flow it into all of the creases and sort of, um, you know, all of the sort of, the, you know, where there's any breaks in that helmet around the rivets and the sort of the visor and stuff to sort of further add definition between the areas. It's sort of like a pin wash, if you will, but with a more strong or more concentrated paint than you would be using. I'll even be blending it out a little bit to avoid it being too strong, but I feel like I have to do this here just because with all the teeny tiny details on this helmet, it's almost easier to just apply all the highlights without worrying about preserving the darkness down in the different grooves and actually then to go back in later and add the grooves, the darkness of those grooves in, you know, if that makes sense. Sometimes you know, you have to switch up order and things like this depending on, you know, what item you're working on and it just, it'll be, it'll just be a lot easier. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this case. And then I'll go back over and look at the helmet, see if there's any areas that I need to clean up again by adding, you know, more silver paint, you know, just to, you know, get everything looking exactly the way I want it to be. All right, guys, so that's our finished War of the Roses Era Archer. Um, I think this would also be really useful for painting a lot more kind of sort of lower level soldiers from this period, spearmen, uh, billmen, um, generally archers from the medieval period. This should have a lot of applications for most people. Even though it's a simple figure, you know, I think, you know, it should give you a lot of ideas. I also hope my ideas on painting natural fabrics were helpful, though I think there, it's not really any secret to that. It's really just making the right color choices. And I hope this sort of green, yellow choice, I mean, this pinky, you know, gray choice, you know, they were inspiring to you, but you should definitely try out your own combinations. It's, it's just really about color choices, guys. So, you know, you know, just, Try some stuff out, find out what you like. Um, so if you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, um, subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me your comments with what you thought. If you enjoyed this user request video, if you want to see more of them, you know, your feedback is really important. It tells me, you know, what I need to be doing in the future. And, you know, you know it keeps me producing videos. So, uh, you know, once again, I had a lot of fun doing this. And I will see you next week.